the Paul Leslie Interviews. We're joined by singer-songwriter Zach Rogue of the band's Rogue Wave and also Release the Sunbird. Thank you so much for joining us. Sure, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. First of all, who is Zach Rogue? <laughs> he, he is trying to figure that out. <laughs> He's an a changing question all the time. I think he's I am so, uh, trying to try different, a little different territory right now. I'm trying to learn how to be a little more quiet. What do you mean by that? Trying to be a little more quiet. Well, I think in, in terms of rope, we really got to the the production side of things. The band is kind of like a band, and having the dynamics of a band, and seeing how that can translate live, and trying to be explosive and, and build up a lot of layers. And, I think I, as a songwriter and as a performer, I felt like I really needed to react to that because there's a side, a side of what I do when I'm writing or singing that needs to. You need to have the dynamics be a little less to be able to get the point across. And I, I wanted to make music that was a little more stripped and a little more bare bones and really hear vocals. And I'm really longing to do a record of duetting, so having a female voice present while, while I was singing. And so uh, I just want a little more empty space. It seems like experimenting with sound is something that you do a lot, from the Rogue Wave album to this Release the Sunbird album. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of it is just, I think a lot of it is just life experience. You know, it's, you know, in terms of what's happening in personal lives, in our personal lives, the band between, you know, a speed of death and language is just enormous. You know, life and death things happening and you know, we're we're all affected by the politics surrounding us and our, our personal lives and it came through and you know the time of her life we wanted to make something really visceral and up and really kind of punchy and short songs and straight to the point. And one thing always leads to another and with this record I felt like I just wanted to do something, you know, on my own. And be able to talk about, you know, more cement personal relationships types of things. And I knew I had to do that on my own. I knew I had to do that with other people and, and to have that experience. And to, uh, I wanted to make music that kind of reminded me a little bit of the music I liked when I was a kid. The kind of, you know, a lot of the time in the Garfunkel records or something like that, you know, you hear a lot of things there, you hear a lot of mistakes, you hear a lot of, even a lot of noise. But what you get at the end of that is a lot of emotion, a lot of spirit, and a lot of really great vocal harmony. You know, and I wanted to really explore the vocal harmony and not, Explore necessarily all of the all of the guitar layers and all the kind of drum bombast. You know, I wanted to just strip a lot of that stuff out. And one thing that kind of helped when we were doing that is kind of exploring how to use room mic a lot more and get a, a real live sound. And we had our room mic turned up so much that you know we made a rule that we didn't have any guitar picks in the studio, so I could really hear the warmth of the acoustic when I was playing. And I, I barely played, barely plucking the guitar because the room mics were up so much so I sang quieter I played quieter and as a result I could really hear what everyone in the studio was doing and we could just rely on looking at each other to make changes and not have to go and do a ton of overdub drastically different from the way most albums are recorded today yeah we really we rely on, on the magic of Pro Tools and, and that becomes part of our intuitive process when we rely on Pro Tools and not that there's anything wrong with that, you know, things are changing, and I'm not against change, but I wanted to do something that I felt like we we, we wouldn't have that net, you know, we'd have to get full take together, and we did use some digital technology, we did do some overdubs, you know, we didn't completely abandon that, that process, but what we tried to do is at the heart of it, I want to feel like everybody in the room, we're going to track live like that, that we'd really all feel like everybody got the take. And the song wasn't just stitching things together, but everybody agreed on kind of an emotionally satisfying level that we got the take that we were looking for instead of cutting it up. Tell us about the musicians. Did you know them well? I knew some of them. The guy that I tracked the record with, uh, the engineer, his name's Mike Rodofsky, and he's got this great studio in Bloomington called Russian Recording. And I had done a song with him with Rogue before we did the song for this uh, Pixies compilation. I had a great experience, and I really liked him. And I knew that he built a new studio, and I really liked it. But really, I knew I knew Kate Long who sang on the record. She and I crossed paths before I'd, I'd known her, and I'd always kind of wanted to sing with her. I always knew what her voice sounded like, and I'd I'd hoped that there'd be a time where we could sing together. 
And when I was demoing some of these songs on my own in Oakland, I was using this, this pedal, this pedal that sort of like simulates the sound of a, it's a harmonizer pedal, basically. And I was imagining what it was like to have a female voice. I thought I, just, I could feel those pieces coming together. And then I knew Kenny Childers, the bass player, because he had played at bands before with some of the guys that I know. I didn't know the drummer Pete Schreiner before, but best friends with Mike Rodofsky, the engineer, and it seemed like all these pieces were kind of falling together, that everyone was available, everybody had the time, and, you know, the first day we started tracking, it was like, I felt like I'd known them all my life. It was a really special connection to people. We're talking with Zach Rogue of Release the Sunbird. Is there a favorite song on the album, Come Back to Us? I think the song that kind of speaks to me the most and kind of gets to where I was hoping it could get is I was really happy with how Outlook's Anonymous came out with the last song on the record because it, it was one of those things where I'm sure a lot of people have experienced for recording where I hadn't, I didn't know if it was a song and the session with these guys was almost over and I was, I was second last day and I said, hey guys, I had this thing, I'm not sure if it's a song, but can I play it for you? And, and they said, of course, yeah, sure. And they all sat around and I had this, they had this chord organ which is an organ where you press certain buttons and it makes these chords, and you can do accompaniment with your right hand, but with your left hand, you can press these buttons and it makes chords. So yeah, I started playing the song, and they all just kind of listened a couple of times, and then they just went to their stations, you know, their bass and drums, and we just started playing. And I don't know, I felt like it was a real magical moment where I wanted to have this song that, I don't know, it felt kind of like a funeral procession to me. It felt like the ultimate goodbye song. And I just felt like you don't have to have a completely a completely mapped out song idea. In fact, it's good to have a lot of a lot of things that are open so that the people that you're interacting with help complete that circle and that's what you rely on. You rely on the interaction with other people and not having the entire structure mapped out. It's once you have that faith in other people, which I developed with, with them, I knew that we could accomplish anything. I felt like we if I had stayed longer we could stay more help going because it didn't matter, like I said, that every single aspect of these arrangements was mapped out, that, that we had each other. Could you put a label on what Release the Sunbird is? It says in the press release, it's not a side project, it's not a solo project. So what is it? I just think of it as another band that I'm in. I mean, I, I with, you know, Rogue Wave is, is not a solo project, but, you know, I write the songs for that band, and, and for this, you know, I write the songs for this band, but it's just it's another another group of people I play with. And I feel like it has a real distinct a real distinct flavor to it that's really different and allows me to do different things. And so yeah, I don't feel like it's a solo thing because I don't to me it doesn't sound like especially when you have, you know, Kate singing on the record. I mean it's not about just me, it's about everyone. So I think it's just another band that I'm with another project. What does it mean exactly? Release the Sunbird. How did you come up with that? Well, it's um several things, you know, I, uh, it is obviously a, a song title of a, a song, a, a Robert Pollard song, and he's, you know, a hero of mine, and, it's, you know, that was a song title on his first record, Away from Out of My Voices, so there's, I was feeling a sense of parallel there, but it's really an, it's more of a evocative of more than just that to me. For anyone who is listening to this album, Release the Sunbird, what do you hope they get out of the experience? I think that we... We are all, our lives are so accelerated right now with technology and constant, constant assault of information coming all the time and it feeds our narcissism and it feeds our, our lack of ability to focus and I hope if they listen to the record, it'll make them slow down for a second and uh, just slow down for just, just a second to listen to the music. What is your all-time favorite meal? <laughs> all right. My favorite meal of all time is something my grandmother used to make for me when I was a little kid. <laughs> it's a terrible name. She called it Italian Delight. But yeah, yeah, she made this, this really neat sauce, and it was just this meat sauce and pasta, and it was pretty simple. My grandmother made everything with love, and it was uh, kind of, she knew I loved it, so every time I was here, she'd make it for me. Yeah, I think the best meals are made with, made out of love and uh, made slowly. I would have to concur to there. The last question, very open-ended. What would you say to anyone listening in? I, I appreciate anybody who's paid attention to the music that I've been making over the past years, giving this, this uh, project and this album 
the chance to be heard. I know there's a lot of there's a lot of music out there. There's there's so much you can listen to, and there's there's, there's just an inundation, especially with always discovering new artists all the time. And I've been doing this for a little bit now, so I uh, cool. you know want to give give the the album a chance to be heard. Um, I'm I'm really great. Well, Zach, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it, and I hope to see you performing in Atlanta soon. Yeah, I hope it will be out there soon. I hope so. You have a good one. Take care.